that bandwagon with you in agreement is because they don't want you to go any further in your revelation of their spiritual disposition. And why don't they? Because they have not come to a place where they can bear to hear it from flesh and blood. What they think is flesh and blood, but it's actually the Holy Ghost talking to them. But they can't bear to hear it from someone else. They can say it to themselves, or they can say it to God, or God can say it to them. But they don't want other people saying it. Because they don't want to look that bad in the eyes of others. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Tell yourself the truth. And if the perfecter only sees so much, don't think that that's all God sees. God sees the whole nine yards. The perfecter may only see that little bit. But God sees every aspect of our disposition. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing him? Praise the Lord. I'm trying to get to my lesson. And don't eat off too many tables. Please. Because eating off too many tables is confusing. It brings about confusion. If we're going to move forward, we got to hear God and him alone. And if you know that God has served you up a table, and that table is full of the food God put on it, then eat there. Stop eating all over the place. There's some things you can't even, some preachers you can't even listen to on TV. They will confuse you. Because many of the messages on television feed the flesh. They empower the soul. They empower the soul. They, 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 they tap right into your soulish desires, the ones that you sacrificed, the ones that you departed from. They, they will awaken in you the wantonness and the desire and the lust of the old man that was crucified. Now we'll take this new man into doing things that we did with the old man. And one of the things that we don't realize, I said this to, to, the, to the young ministers, we don't realize the power of wantonness. Wantonness is powerful. Don't you ever underestimate it. To want is powerful. It's powerful. God said something to me that I'll be sharing, I guess, at this conference. I don't know. I don't know when, but probably at this time. I don't know. But I'll just say this much about it. You know what God said to me? He said, do you think fallout is random? Random. Think about that now. This is what our God said. He said, do you think fallout is random? Do you know what he's talking about? What is fallout? When people fall out from a ministry. That's what he was talking about. You know, you know when people fall out of a ministry, they... they pull away from a ministry or fall out and fall into sin because someone in higher position sin in the ministry and they and people fall out because someone in up here felt you know fell then now we got to deal with the fallout so people are dropping like flies my god with all, you know, that is so, that is such a grim prospect of salvation and God's plan of redemption. It makes him so weak. 
seeing as how if someone like myself that has been given an abundance of revelation, you don't have to tell me that. I already know that. God has, been give, God has given me an abundance of revelation, and I have passed those revelations on to his people. But supposing I fall out. Sharon, what are you going to do? You're going to fall out too? You're going to wake up and say, there's no power in this? That's what the high priest ministry is all about. Bringing us to God, ordained in things pertaining to God for men. Huh? So the things that the high priest feed to you should be pertaining to God, not himself. I never point you to me. So what if I fall out? So what if you find out tomorrow that I've had a boyfriend for the last 10 years. Oh, Lord, help me. Why did I have to say boyfriend? Could have think of some other sin. But that's the one you guys feel is so big. I can do all the others, but don't get a boyfriend. Hallelujah. Don't get no boyfriend, Doc. You do dealing there. But supposing you wake up tomorrow in the headlines... Say, Dr. Banks, the great revelator, head of Bible Teachers International, headquarters in Kingston, Jamaica, has six churches across the nation. Woo! And put BT out there. And put Dr. Banks out there, your leader, the one you've been talking about and trying to get people to come in here. Oh, if she should fall. The high priest ministry points you to God. Huh? Doesn't point you to me. I'm just like you. I'm trying to get to heaven. I, I haven't been there yet. I ain't made it yet. I'm trying to get there, sweetie. I may mess up on the way. But if I mess up, who's going to pick me up? When you mess up, Brian, I got to come get you. When you mess up, I got to come get you. If I have to come to Christiana, wherever you at up there, I got to come up there, and I got to nurture you, and I got to bring these other brothers, and we're going to sit with you. If you go in the bathroom, I'm sending the brothers in the bathroom with you to preach to you, to get you back on course. But who's going to do that for me if I should fall? Are you hearing God? Huh? Talking about relationship. That revival should have brought us into relationship with our God. And relationship with God means no shadow of turning. Relationship with God means not being fearful and unbelieving. Relationship with God means trust and steadfastness. And not fearful of Obeying the word. Jesus wasn't fearful of popular opinion. Jesus wasn't fearful if people talked about his, the circumstances surrounding his birth in a negative manner. Called his mother a fornicator. He wasn't fearful of that. It didn't change who he was. Come on. And if people begin to talk about you and talk about this ministry and talk about your leader, does that change who you are? Or, is, or are you so caught up in the image that you want to portray to your nation that you have feed me to the wolves? Lord, don't ever let me fall. Please, Jesus. Don't let me fall. See, you got you to gotta consider 
the reason why I threw that out there at you, because you got to consider, how would you respond? You know, all the dignitaries you have introduced me to. All of the people that you have, have spoken, spoken to about your ministry and what it's been doing in the nation and what it's doing in your lives and, and, and all the, you got a real apostle. Think about the people you've said that to. The first thing I learned about leadership, you know the first thing I learned about leadership, prophetess, was not to be afraid to get my hands dirty. That's the first thing I learned. I learned to do like Jesus. I learned that if I saw a man in a septic tank, you know what a septic tank is? Do y'all have them in Jamaica? Yes. Okay, I don't know whether y'all call them cesspools. Septic tanks, septic tanks. I learned that if I saw a man in a sin septic tank, I learned how to roll up my sleeve. I knew I had to do that. I had to roll up my sleeve and step in the tank sometime with him because he couldn't get himself out. He's going to drown in his own mess. I learned how to get in there with him <laughs> and lift him up and bring him out and let God wash him off. Uh-huh. I don't need no washing because I went in clean and I'm coming out clean. He fell in the septic tank because he was dirty. I went in clean and I'm coming out clean and, and, and public opinion and what people say and what people think doesn't make me dirty. What people say about me because I'm a, of my association with him does not make me unclean. Are you hearing God? All I need to know, all God say is when you look at the septic tank, you see the man in the tank, make sure he's repenting. Make sure he's reaching for God. If he's not repentant, leave him alone. You can't bring him there. Stand right here and tell him you need to cry out to God. Stay up here and tell him, cry out to God. If he refuses to cry out to God, God's not going to push you over in that tank with him. But if he's crying out to God, say, God, here we go. Get in there with him. You cannot be afraid of that and call yourselves Christians. Jesus was not afraid to be identified while we were yet in sin. While we were in sin, he didn't wait till we got good because there was no goodness in us. talking about what it means to be a partaker of a high priest ministry. That's what it means. What are you getting from the high priest? Follow me as I follow Christ. If I'm not afraid of getting dirty, you shouldn't be afraid of getting dirty. If I'm not afraid of public opinion, why are you? If I'm not trying to build an image of myself, then why are you trying to build an image of yours? If the only image that matters is God, his image. If that's the only image that matters, then why aren't we building that one? Because we're afraid, we we, we don't, you know, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lady said to me one time, she was, I was on a missionary journey. I went to Haiti. She went down there and um, she, um, God used her and her husband to, to take me down there with them. And uh, 
they were kind they you know they had a little substance and and i was telling her that the prosperity message was not from god and she said to me she said well i don't understand you just need to i just need to understand something why is it that if the prosperity message is not of God, then why is it that I have so much substance and you have none? And my response was, why is it I have God and you don't? And she just stopped and went. Furthermore, you ought to be glad that God moved on your heart to use your substance to bring me into your life so that you could find out who he really is. Because you've been serving the God of your imagination. You don't know real God. When I finished preaching to that lady and her husband, she said, pray for me. Just pray for me. The high priest ministry was supposed to pour the grace of God into us. It's supposed to pour that grace into us, that influence, that godly influence into our hearts. Our hearts <coughs> are supposed to be influenced by God. And so much influenced by God that there's no room for nobody else, for nothing else that takes preeminence over him. Nothing, that grace that comes from God should take preeminence over everything that has to do with us. And the high priest ministry is designed to pour that grace. It pours it out like water into the people of God. And the high priest never, ever points the people to himself. Never. He always points the people to God. What does that mean for you? That means that what matters to me is not whether we go and sit down and eat together, not whether we can go out and shop together. But with or without me, do you have a real relationship with God? That's what the high priest ministry is supposed to build in you. A relationship with God. A relationship with God that says, whatever that Bible says, God, however that Bible says God is going to respond to me, I am going to experience that. Now that's where we're going in this conference that's coming. See, we can't, Nars, you've learned a lot since you've been here, have you not? And I heard you say, I heard you say today that watching Kareem makes, just inspired you to want to go all the way with God. That's going to be and already is being tested in you. You struggle. You struggle, you struggle, you struggle, you struggle. God say, relax. Relax. Let him be your business partner. Let him run your business. Stop trying to run it yourself. Let God run it. That high priest ministry is supposed to build Christ in us to where we can see him being formed in the people. 
You see, when Christ is being formed in you, you lay aside weights and sin and anything that besets you because Christ, God, is forming Christ in you. And, and remember I talked about a shadow of turning? You know, this is something God said to me. He said, there is no almost Christ. There is no just about Christ. Almost Christ. No such thing. It's either Christ or it's not. See, you can't take the scripture as he is, so are we, and break it up into fractions. And have a little part of you that has a shadow in it. The light that is in us is supposed to shine abroad. And when that light of, of the, that was in the countenance of Jesus Christ is shining in our inner, inner man, it lights up every part of our soul to where there is no darkness at all so that we can truly say that as he is, so are we. But when there's darkness in a little, just a little spot, just a little, you see the little shadow? Just a little shadow over in one little corner. That's not Christ. And see, where do we want to go in this conference? We want to go all the way to the effectual working of the high priest ministry. We want Christ to work his high priest ministry in us. Oh, come on. So what, what am I saying? Prepare yourself. For this conference. Prepare yourself. Put your cup out. Put that cup out. Put that cup out that says, God, I'm ready to drink. If it's a cup of suffering, I'll drink that too. God does not want his high priest walking in fear of the gods of this world. Walk in the fear of the Lord, but not the gods of this world. They have no power over you unless you give it to them. And you can't take the gods of this world and, and bring them to your bosom and pet them or pacify them. There's no pacification for Antichrist. The gods of this world cannot be pacified with our little compromises. When we compromise, oh, you cannot pacify the gods of this world with compromise. Are you hearing God? You got to be steadfast, immovable. If you're going to be the high priest and if you're going to receive the high priest ministry, Remember the high priest had to offer sacrifice for himself first. And that sacrifice he offered had to be without spot or blemish, which translates to the sons of God that our offering up before God, this body that we present, a living sacrifice, must be without spot or blemish. It must be holy. And every aspect of it must be holy. So compromise is not a word. We should be familiar with. Sons of God, don't compromise. You cannot compromise and then go before God. Huh? That high priest, glory to God, if there was a spot on that lamb that he offered up, he died when he went before God. So if you compromising in any area and then running up in the presence of God, God said, think not that you'll receive anything from me. I'm not even listening to you. And you better hurry up and get right before I turn you out as a bastard. Are you hearing God?
I was going to go into a scripture. I'm going to read this one verse because it sums up what I've been saying today. Hebrews 10 chapter. Donette took us here the first night. Verse 19 and 20. Pastor. Hebrews 10, 19 and 20. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Okay, now. We don't need any mediator, but we got one. Jesus mm -hmm. has paved the way once and for all for us to enter in, right? And where are we going? Now, this is what I want us to understand. Having, therefore, boldness to do what? into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. To enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. I want you to get the right mindset here. Because we think of entering in at a time of prayer, a time of fellowship, a time of communion with God. But what he's talking about here is that this entering in is a positional change. In fact, we're in his presence all the time. We don't have to find him anymore. That's what, this, that's what Paul was saying to the church at Rome. Who shall descend up to go get him and bring him down? Who shall go into the lower parts of the earth and bring him back up? No, we don't have to do that. Why? Because we've entered into the holy place. We're in the Holy Ghost. We are in the Holy Ghost. We remain in the Holy Ghost. We are sealed inside of the Holy Ghost. We've been sealed up inside of the Spirit of God. When do we come out? When does the soul jump out? When does it run over here? When does it go over there? It's sealed inside of God. Unless God kick us to the curb. Through reprobation. So as long as we're not a reprobate, we are in the presence of God. We have entered his presence to remain in his presence. So for us to, to, to you know, to have to uh, get in a posture, you know, to find God, he's right here. He's within us. Huh? Kingdom of God is within me. The fullness of the Godhead is within us. I need the Father, he's here. I need the Son, he's here. I need the Holy Ghost, he's here. I need the Word, it's here. The fullness dwells within us. So we can be bold. We can have courage. We can have courage to serve. We can defy principalities and powers with our servitude and our holiness. And God's way. Yeah, we can. Read. By a new and living way, uh -huh. which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Now that's the heart of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I hope it comes across in the conference. I hope it comes across today. But can I can I see you? Just one right now. Let's see. Let me see how I'm gonna do this. Yes, come north. Nigel is looking for God. Come here. And, and Naris is the God of the universe. He is portraying God. 
And Nigel is looking for God. But this God dwells in the heavens. And Nigel is an Israelite. Let's make him an Israelite. And this God gives commandment. He says, I'm going to bring you guys out of Egypt and bring you to the foot of Mount Sinai. And when you get there, I'm going to come down on the mountain. My glory is going to come down on the mountain. But I'm telling you now, I don't want anybody to touch the mountain. And if, a, if an animal touch it, kill him. If a person touch it, kill him. Because the mountain is holy. Anywhere I am is holy. Anywhere I dwell is holy. I am holy. Huh? I dwell in holy places. You hearing God? So you can't touch this mountain. So, Mr. Israelite, you got to stand here and send somebody that God has sanctioned. Moses being your high priest then, before Aaron was, was consecrated. So God, God allows Moses to come up. And he get the word from God, and he brings it back to the people. And he tell the people what God say. And it must have been some kind of confusion going on because at one point, God started speaking. Apparently, they didn't have too much confidence in what Moses was saying, so God spoke himself. And when God started speaking, the mountains started quaking and shaking and smoking and carrying on. And people said, hey, that's all right. Tell them to hush. You don't have to say nothing else. Earthquakes and everything. Glory to God. We got it. We got this. We got it. They trembled in the fear of that God. And you know what? His awesomeness made him unapproachable. So, if he's that, all of that, what do you have to do to get to him? What do you have to do to get to him? As a nation, as a people, you can't get to me. You see, you see that? As a nation, as a people, you can't get to me. I got to come to you. I got to work my work. I got to work my operation. I got to do what I do to come to you. There's nothing. There's nothing you are empowered to do. There's nothing on the planet that can prepare you to receive me. There's nothing down here on earth that can protect you from coming into my presence. If you come into my presence, you're going to die. Unless I protect you. Do you understand God? So this, let me fast forward here. This new and living way. God says, now I'm going to come down. We'll go into more details this weekend. But I'm going to come down. And I'm going to eliminate the high priest that stood between me and you, Aaron. You're not going to need him because I'm going to make you the high priest. Because I'm going to put you in my presence. So, you're in the presence of God every moment, every second of every day. Your soul is sealed in God, in God. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. That ought to make somebody happy. There's nothing he can do about it. 
So you don't have to find him now. You don't have to look for him. You don't, you don't have to get in despair when circumstances, situations, relationship, everything goes haywire, and you're looking for God like, 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 like Job. I look to my right, he's not there. To my left, he's not there. Behind me, I can't find him. I can't go forward. I don't see him there. Where are you? God said, not so with the sons. So, <laughs> that's why it's so, when we pray, we can just do this. We, you know, uh, uh, hallelujah. When Daniel prayed, Daniel had to look to the east, toward Jerusalem, where God used to be. C come on, somebody. Hallelujah. To try to get in touch with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Catholics go in to a room and talk to some man and tell him, get in touch with him for me. But the sons, but the sons, the sons of God are high priests that dwell in the presence of almighty God. Every moment of every day, we are in the presence of Almighty God. Our work is done in the Holy of Holies. We work inside of the Holy of Holies. We work in the presence of God. Even when we're working in the holy place, we're in the presence of God because the veil has been rent. There's nothing that separates the holy place from the holy of holies. So the light of God, the Shekinah glory that shined in the holy of holies is now shining in the holy place. It's shining on the table of showbread where we fellowship. It's a brighter light than the candlestick. And it has a sweet aroma that covers the altar of incense. We have access to the mercy seat of God. Huh? This great God. This great God is in my face. I said, this great God came and got in my face. He's in my face. He said, you want to know me? Here I am. You want to know me? Here I am. How do you look, God? What do you look like? You want to know what I look like? Find yourself a mirror. Come on, somebody. Find yourself a mirror. You. You. This is the form that God has taken. This is his form. <laughs> this is his form. This is the form God has taken. This is his form. This is God in the flesh. This is what he looks like now. This is God in the flesh working on her phone. In my church. <laughs> this is God. <laughs> I know she, you're taking notes, right? Definitely. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you are God in the flesh, stand up and make the devil mad and shout hallelujah. Come on, I can't hear you, Zion. I can't hear you. Hallelujah. 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 Those of you that have been watching online, I hope that you realize that if you're born again, you are God in the flesh. And if you're not born again, fall on your knees right before you. Amen. The television set right now and say, God, save me. God, forgive me of my sin. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Lord, deliver me.
Deliver me now, Father. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Let redeem cry. This is Dr. Banks saying, you've been watching Global Praise, and we will see you next time. Sunday morning live. This is Sunday morning live. Join us for the conference next week. This week, come and praise the Lord. Starting Friday night at Campion College, we will be there. We will continue this message. We will go into more details about it. I want to see every one of you that are watching television, that have been following Bible Teachers International at that conference. You won't regret it because we are going to hear from God. Bible Teachers, Dr. Banks said, we'll see you. My name is Pastor Star Groff, and I'm the pastor of the Bible Teachers Online Church. And I'm here today to tell you about the Bible Teachers Theological Institute. I'm excited. If you can go to our website, www.bibleteachers.org, you'll be able to download a free copy of the Student Handbook for the year 2014. This handbook gives you a complete overview of our Theological Institute. We and are an accredited Bible study, you, and we have degree I would just programs. Bow our heads. Or if you want to come to the altar, that's also okay. You know, I just want to tell him thanks and to to to, to ask him to to just continue to strengthen us. You know, to 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 finish our testimony of Christ in us. Amen, amen. So come, knowing that we are. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the power in your word, Lord. Thank you for truth. Hallelujah. Thank you that you told us a long time that truth is sufficient, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, come as well. Because he's at a partial God. Amen. 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 He may still be waiting on somebody. Let's just come. Hallelujah. Come, 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 come. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we wait, Nigel said he wanted to say something. Um, so I'm going to allow him to do it. It may encourage somebody. Hallelujah. And you can come. Morning, saints. I just want to take this um, opportunity to openly ask for forgiveness um, this morning because I don't know who was following the service when Doc started. She asked who was doing um, the recap. No, I. She actually asked me. Right, and um, you know, this message that came over today was everything. The whole. It sound like a three-hour message to me today because it was all on me, all right? Um, one of the part that Dr. Um, Doc said, we should take God off the back burner and put him on the front burner. Now, when she asked me, the first thing I s that came up in me is that I wasn't at church, right? And the truth is I wasn't at church doesn't mean, didn't mean that I couldn't 
do the recap and find some ways to get that message, right? Because I was in Kingston and I was doing some business and I was telling myself, you know, I, was, I would be busy. I wouldn't get any time to get the message or whatever. And normally I'd, I would record it and whatever, right? I was in Kingston for two days and it's in the night when I was going down, I remember that that doc had asked me. And that was the time when I should try and get a copy of the tape or something, you know? And I was there and when I went, Home and all of that. When I went back in the country, I was trying to get the message off that, and it came off Wednesday. And I went back Wednesday, then it was no more, you know. But I'm saying, you know, um, one of the messages that's, um, it, it was preached was that we shouldn't see nobody after the flesh, right? And it's not like his duck was asking me, All right? And I'm just openly asking forgiveness because I don't want to be left out of whatever is happening. Praise the Lord. That's the faithfulness of God. God is basically saying he doesn't want an excuse. So out with the excuses. Is there somebody else who feel like you need to just repent before the Lord? Hallelujah. You want to despise the shame and just say, God, count me in. I'm not counting myself out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to be praying shortly, but we're giving you that opportunity. If you know you need to be counted with those who want to say, Lord, we're just sorry. We're going forward, Lord. Hallelujah. We don't count flesh as important right now. What's important to us is that we remain inside of where you've placed us and work inside of where you've placed us. Hallelujah. 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 All heads bowed, all, heads bowed, all eyes closed. Hallelujah. All heads bowed, all eyes closed as you reflect on your own life, your own soul. Every Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. That Jesus. Jesus Christ. Talk to him from oh, the dead, oh, God. and he is oh, Lord. Surrender to your Lordship, Lord. Oh, Lord. We every Lordship. every knee, Hallelujah. every knee gonna bow, Lord. We bow, bow to you, Lord Jesus. And every tongue. Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come Let's on, talk saints, to make Jesus. it personal. Hallelujah. He's my Lord. He's my Lord. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's my Lord. Mm. Yeah.
in this place, your Lord in our lives, your Lord in heaven, hey, hey, hey. your Lord in hell, you are Lord of the universe, yes, yes, you yes, you are Lord, mm -hmm. exalt you, na, na, na. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 sir. Yes, Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hey, another Hey, we say yes to you, Lord. We say yes to you, Lord. Oh, holy God. We say yes. We say yes. We say yes to you. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Our soul say yes to you. We say yes to you, Lord. Holy is your name. Holy is your name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. My, 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 Jesus. We love you today, God. Yes, we love you today, God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Yes, God, uh, we're making ourselves available to you, Lord. Uh, yes, Lord Jesus. Uh, you said, take your yoke upon us. Uh, you say your yoke is easy uh, and your burdens are light. Uh, holy God, uh, we bring ourselves before you, Lord. Uh, saying, Lord, receive us today. Uh, receive us, God. Uh, wipe our slates clean today, God. Uh, have mercy on your people today, God. Uh, have mercy on us, God. Uh, You've touched our hearts, Lord. Your word has quickened us. Your word has pierced us, God. It has pierced down to the depths of our soul, God. We ask you today, God, to purge us of all unrighteousness. Purge us of every spot. Purge us of everything that's unclean. Purge us of that which you don't want in us. Purge us, Lord. 
sanctifies, sanctifies to your truth, sanctifies, set us apart to do your will. Yes, God, yes, God, condition our hearts today in the name of Jesus. Oh, holy God, that it be not grievous to do your will. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We want to serve you, Lord. We want to serve you. We want to glorify you. Grant us this privilege, God. Grant us the privilege to serve you, to glorify you in this untoward generation. God, in this hostile environment, we want to serve you, God. We want to be sanctified, set aside for your use, God. We don't want to compromise, Lord. Wash away the stain of our compromising. Wash it away, God, huh? that we will be Christ huh? and Christ alone. Huh? Let him be formed in us, God. Huh? Let him be formed in us, God. Huh? Let him be in our ways, huh? in our doings, huh? in our hearts, huh? in our minds, huh? in our souls, huh? in our thinking, huh? in our talking. Huh? Oh, holy God. Huh? Let Christ be formed in us, God. Holy Father, we worship you. We worship you today. We worship you. 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 He's a well of water in my soul for my devotional team. Praise you, Jesus. These devotional team, y'all don't know this. <laughs> He's a well of water. <laughs> He's a well of water in, in my soul. soul. He's a well of water.